Good morning, guys. This is Richard back at you. Annie's in the house this morning, staying warm. Boy, do we got a lot of work going on, guys. I mean, we got cars, jobs, everywhere. You could imagine what we got. But we got Mr. Reeves, uh, 98, uh, 3500 GMC, uh, four-wheel drive uh, work truck in the house. Uh, I believe he's a farmer. Um, got a feeder, maybe even on the back of it and stuff. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Uh, I wasn't informed on what was wrong with this truck. Teresa, do you know? Um, nope. I think I missed that part myself. I think I missed up that part too. It just says transmission rebuild 4L80E. Well, Trent and Cody know what's going on, so I'll have to get with them, guys. But we're going to tear this thing down and see if we can't find out uh, what's wrong with it ourselves. We don't need help. But anyway, you know us, uh, when we do things, we try to do it 199.9% .9 right. So if we can't, we don't do it. But anyway, you can see here, We've got all kinds of, of goodies that we're going to be putting in this unit. Uh, all farmers like to do it right, let me tell you. So we've got our complete overhaul kit with clutches, our bonded pistons. We have our bushing kit. We have our pump gears. We have our pressure control solenoid. We have our shift solenoids, our uh, uh, PWM solenoid here. Uh, we have our uh, intermediate sprag. We also have a brand new forward drum. We have an overdrive planetary. Now, uh, we also, we got our Sonex uh, input shaft. We have our Sonex intermediate shaft. We have our Sonex forward hub. And we got our performance pack shift kit that we're gonna be putting in this too. So we've got a lot of cool things that we're, we're gonna be doing to this uh, transmission. So I'm always excited when I get to use Sonex parts. It just makes it so much funner. Well, let's get this thing apart. Now you notice here on the input speed sensor and output speed sensor, we only have an input, we do not have an output. Now being that this is four wheel drive, our speed sensor is going to be on the transfer case. It doesn't show any metal or anything stuck on the end of it. A lot of times you got a lot of metal damage. Uh, there's usually metal stuck all over that. But if you look here, of course we got a big problem. We got fluid in the connector. So that's one thing that we're still waiting on coming in too. So we've got a few things that still ain't here. Boy, this thing's heavy. Big old ugly converter in here. When you talk about massive, look at the mounting pads and stuff. Now they made two different versions of this converter. They made what we call a B81, B82. Uh, they made one that is really hollowed out in the middle. It's a lot lighter, uh, but they will interchange. A little bit of wear on the hub there where the bushing runs. And the fluid's very nasty. The fluid is very nasty. This one's, this one's probably going to be bad. I can't smell, so I'm lucky. <laughs> it won't be if you get this on me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we have our lockup O-ring here. It's pretty much not even round anymore. It's flat on the edges and stuff like that. So you always want to replace that right off the bat. You never want to put a bad lockup seal on anything. Of course, we have our quick disconnect cooler line fittings. Uh, I think it's this one here. Of course, this is our special one that we have here compared to this one. If you put this one here and put another one like this here, then this tranny is going to fry. It has to have this extended tube on the back here. Uh, there's a gap in here. Uh, then it has to reach over and get into the support where there's a seal right there that um, seals on the end of it right here. And your cooler line flow goes into the support and then lubricates everything that way. So pretty simple. I notice we got a ear that's broke here. You can tell it's been broke for a long time. Cody said when he took it out they had a big old washer right here trying to protect it. Keep it. Ugh. That foot is bad. Now we just drained it here on the drain. Tank, so. 
we're gonna actually get to see what's in the pan. Just the old farmer dirt in there, dust that always blows up in there and stuff is terrible. Ooh, yeah, this one's cooked. Yep. Now I think Trent said this is barely moved in actually. I can smell it. Yes, it's pretty thick right through there. Now we do have a late model style deep pan. Anytime you got these bumps on the filter, it's a deep pan. If these are missing, then it's a shallow pan. So you don't want to get your filter mixed up. Of course, we have our PWM solenoid here. We have our pressure control solenoid here. Now, they do have an early and a late here, different connectors. So, and we have our retainer bolts that hold the wiring harness to the valve body. And we have our pillow switch here. They make different ones of these, too. You got to be careful. This you can see how there's a runner right here. Some of them will have two runners, or it'll be in different spots, so you gotta be careful on that part of it. <laughs> now, this tube right here is a lube tube for the rear case bushing, and if it was a two-wheel drive, it would lubricate their tail housing bushing on the yoke back here in the back. Uh, the earlier designs had a tube that come all the way from the front right here and went all the way to the back, so they robbed it from back here now on the little bit later versions. I'm going to blow that out, clean it out really good, and make sure it flows. And then we have our shift solenoids here. They'll only go on one way uh, because the bracket is one of them's longer than the other. And plus, the, so you can't get them mixed up or anything like that because of the bracketry on the uh, valve body there. So. Am I lucky I can't smell, Teresa? I see you holding your nose. Yes, you're lucky. <laughs> so all of our bolts here are, are 10 millimeter, and then we have our 8 millimeter here that hold the pillow switch on. So it's not too hard to get them mixed up. So or not to get them mixed up. It's pretty obvious where they go. Our pillow switch here. Now these are little micro switches here. You can just push on, film click. Basically, when a tranny makes a shift, it'll push on, so it'll push on one, tell the computer what gear you're in, stuff like that. I'm starting to smell like an additive. I just got a whiff of something like a. I mean, these are gonna burn to my eyes. Like um, a Transex or some type of additive in it uh, to make the tranny work. Every that, time you take that's the off, smell. It just kind of yeah, I, I got a little bit of linger in that. Just, just then, maybe my smell's coming back. Of course, we have our accumulators here. You'll notice one spring will be longer than the other. You just don't want them to get them mixed up. It's pretty, pretty simple to do. Well, you can always Google it and figure out if you laid it down wrong, because it's easy to grab these and just throw them in there. So, oh my gosh, what'd I do? Which way did it go? So it's, you gotta be careful. But you can always Google it and figure out where it goes. I wonder where my little green screwdriver went. I lost that little thing. That's my favorite one, guys. Where did it go? Well, I don't see it. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna be putting a, a shift kit in this uh, transmission. It's mainly got to do with high pressure, stuff like that. This train is really bad about having high pressure problems and breaking things. So the shift kit kind of caters to a lot of that. Now, if you notice here, you can see we got some plate wear.
quite a bit in places. Now a lot of your shift kits won't tell you which holes to drill to make this tranny shift firmer just by the plate. Like this shift kit we got doesn't, rec doesn't say anything about drilling ho feed holes or anything like that. So we have another kit that we go in here and we'll enlarge some of these feed holes depending on if it's fourth gear, second gear or whatever. So this old tranny's been in there a long time. Getting that off. No. Now we do also, I got, I forgot to get it out over the cabinet over there. We'll be putting a, a new Sonex uh, TCC valve in this thing uh, with a ring on it, a Teflon ring. So uh, if you got any uh, bore wear or anything like that, and, and plus it'll come with a, two springs uh, that'll give you a firmer lockup or an, uh, a, a factory lockup, depending on what the vehicle's being used for and stuff like that. It's actually, by, you take this valve out here, it, it's actually back in here. This gasket wasn't stuck on there so bad. And this thing, I think I'm getting a little bit of whiff of like ammonia or ether or something. I don't know what it is. But anyway, our new valve will go in here. And they give you two different springs uh, for OEM fill lockup or a little bit firmer lockup for towing or something like that. Uh, you can also see here on your shift solenoids how this got a short bracket and a long bracket. You can't get them mixed up. So the main thing is just replace them. I'm starting to miss my little screwdriver, guys. I don't know what I did with that thing, but I'm pretty attached to it. I gotta find it. But we got all of our check balls here. Each one has its nice little spot. But some of these things you gotta be careful. Right down in here, there's a place you could put a check ball, and it does not go there kind of pour it out a little bit. If you notice right here, here's a trough where you can put a check ball. Fits right in there perfect. And actually, if you look at the plate right here, set this plate back on there, it even has a hole and a, and a, a bleed orifice hole beside it. But it does not take a check ball there. You can put one there real, real easy. So you always want to look at your instructions on your kit and stuff like that for check ball locations. You got your servo for your band. I mean, we don't really ever see any issues here. Just uh, put your new Teflon ring on there. Unless we have our wiring harness here that's going to be replaced. Anytime they got fluid in them, guys, chunk them. And these are really bad about it. So you just might as well just put a new one in every one you do. Now this is our ba uh, reverse band servo here that applies the reverse band. I could have blew air in here and it would have pushed the piston down and applied the band. But Teresa might have got soaked or something. But you can just see how, how nasty it is in here. Just full of, I mean it's nasty, nasty. That's why, you know, if you get an old hydraulic style transmission, it's got two million miles on it, you know, you, you don't want to service it because of that stuff right there is what starts getting mixed up back in the new fluid and stuff like that. So now we have our overdrive uh, hollow bolt here that goes into support. Fluid physically goes through there and applies the clutch. It's an aluminum bolt and uh, your shift kit will come with a steel one. So you want to definitely put your shift kit in there, bolt in there. And then of course we have a, a 12.38 bolt down here in the case. Your overhaul kit and your shift kit will come with a new bolt too. So now anytime you mess with these areas, you always want to flat file in here. Flat file around here, flat file around here. That way you got anything standing up, you'll knock it down. So pretty simple. And you can see your park linkage through here. Anytime you put it in park, locks right in. You ever hear that clicking? That's what you're hearing when you put it in park before you come to a stop. That's what you're hearing. So pretty simple. Yep. Don't pass out on me, Teresa. You're looking a little pale there. Oh my God. <laughs> now did you see that oil just pour out of that bolt when I took it out? I sure did. Look at that, run all the way down. 
That's why we highly recommend <coughs> double sealing your bolts because the pressure getting in here, filling that bolt hole up, and if that uh, seal got hard or shrank or anything like that, it's going to leak right out of that bolt. And you know they did. And they do. This thing's probably been hot, hot, hot in the fields, you know, towing or going low, lugging through the deep grass and stuff. But we always double seal our bolts, that way we just don't have no issues. We even seal the bolts on transmissions that don't even have seals on the bolts. <laughs> so we're pretty consistent on uh, what we do. And we have our pump bolts here. We have a little bracket right here. Some of them will have it, some of them won't. You can see right there it goes into this hole right here. Now this is on the side, so this could be for your vent, something like that. Keep fluid from going out the vent. Of course you want to look in here for any type of wear. You want to look here for any wear. Scotch bright your areas up, put new bushings in here. Have a thrust washer there. You want to come in here and look at this pump. Especially through here, you got a suction and a pressure side, so you don't want anywhere here at all. Anywhere, anywhere in the pump. But now you can see here, now this has got a big old 454 motor in it. You got to remember that. Uh, I don't know how many miles on this truck. 266.98. Okay. So we know the motor's got a lot of wear, unless it's a brand new motor. Uh, we have our pump gears here. But we're going to come here and look at this pump bushing. Look at that pump bushing there. Look how wiped out it is on the bottom. You come over here on the top, looks almost brand new. That tells me there that the crankshaft is setting really low in the motor. That the main bearings are wore out, that the crank's setting really low in the motor, coming down and pushing on the, the downward on this right here on this pump bushing once you bolt your torque converter up and stuff like that. The crankshaft needs to be lifted. The only way you can do it is with new bearings. So. When we go back uh, with a new bushing, going to be a bad at bushing and stuff, but we're going to come in here and there's a, a relief hole right through this channel right here. We're going to drill that out really big and through the pump. Uh, you can see this hole right here. We're going to drill that hole out right there really big because it, it lines up with this hole here and relieve a lot of pressure off this seal. That way if we get a lot of bushing wear right here, it's not going to blow the front seal out. It's, it's going to drain back into the pan. So. Especially when you get them that way. So there's nothing we can do. We're going to put a new bushing and put it all back together. But there is physically nothing we can do to stop that from happening to the brand new bushing once we put it in this tranny. There's nothing we can do about it. I can try to offset this pump a little bit here by moving this just a couple thousandths and try to relieve it a little bit. You, you still, it's really hard to do. So put you some new gears in there. New boost valve in, the, uh, in through here. Your shift kit will come with a new boost valve that goes in here. The spring will be changed, stuff like that. So, of course, this is our overdrive planetary assembly. Engine braking drum. We're going to get this snap ring off right here. That right there. We're going to pull this input shaft out. Now this is the one that gets the Sonex billet input shaft. We'll be putting that in there. So also we're going to be replacing the planet 90% of the time. And we replaced the sun gear 100% of the time in this drum. This is a one piece right here. So you have to replace the whole piece. Of course, we have our roller clutch here. Now they did, the later versions uh, changed this up quite a bit right here. A lot smaller sprag assembly and stuff. So you want to make sure that this diameter here is the same diameter because they, uh, when they went to the other sprag, they shrank this area up here smaller. So, of course, we have our engine brake clutch here. Let's see what this looks like. toast. So we're probably going to get down this unit. There's going to be a lot of things toast. 
But the main thing on this sun gear, you want to look on both sides. See if there's any wear, because this gear is so tiny that we just always see a lot of wear here once we get it cleaned up. So, and then, like I said, we'll see wear here, stuff like that. So, just a, a domino effect. Uh, you start running a lot of metal through these things. Of course, we have our overdrive clutch here. This is where our center support bolt went through. You could screw that in there like that and grab you an air blower. Or you can even check it to the hole, but hey. But that bolt is hollow and that's what that does. We have a little bleed orifice over here, that's why it's bleeding off. If I take and plug that up right there, it should physically hold pressure as long as I'm See? Yeah. See, it'll hold. So you want to always check that. Once you put new seals and stuff in this, um, you can air check it back and make sure it doesn't leak. Because we have our overdrive clutch. Now a lot of people, this thing right here, this gets Trent putting this back together a lot. This thing is really tough to put this back together. Because you have a seal here and a seal here. So when you set that in there, you got a feeler gauge. This all the way around. Then you got to take and flip it over and then you got to feeler gauge this around and then you got to get it to pop in. And then you don't want it to come apart so I'll take it, put it on a shell like that and then I'll come in here and put my snap ring and stuff in like that so pretty simple of course we have our forward drum here You can see here that uh, we still have a wave in the forward drum, which we'll be leaving that in there. Putting a new bonded piston, new clutches, clean the steels up or new, put new steels. But you always want to check right here. If this bushing right here gets wore out, it lets the input shaft, these two ceiling rings right here, this shaft will start rubbing on the inside of this drum right here them ceiling rings run it rubs right here and you notice it hasn't rubbed at all that I can tell so the bushing's still good but we'll replace it but we get them in here hundred percent of the time that this shaft's been rubbing right here and, and it causes the forward clutch to burn up so it's one reason why I got a brand new drum over there because 90 percent of the time they come in here they're wore out Of course, we have our high gear clutch here. Now, you notice we have a wave in this too in our high gear clutch. And why they put this wave in there is to soften it up in reverse. Uh, it will affect third gear just a little bit by putting it in there, but the way the tranny is designed, it's not going to uh, burn the tranny up in high gear or anything like that. But they do use it to soften reverse. Uh, they can't stop make the band slow down, so they, they do it in the high gear clutch. So your high gear clutch comes on, your reverse band comes on, and you back up. It's pretty simple. So we will be leaving this in here because if we don't put this in here when he puts it in reverse, it can jar his teeth. So we're not going to do that, but we're still going to make this tranny work really, really nice. Of course, we have our Sprague assembly here. Now... This is a like a, a wire snap ring. It, it's like a spring. It's got a lock on it right here. What we do is we try to push that to where that lock is in this little little dip right here. That way you can get it out of there. Come on, don't make me a liar. Come on. 
There we go. It's just like, um, I was going to say something, but I changed my mind. There you go. But to lock it back, you'll have to get it lined up in here, push it down in there, it'll clip, and then you can turn it over to the side where it's out of its way where it can't come unlocked. So pretty simple. Look here for any type of wear. We see a lot of wear on these two teeth right here that keeps this washer from spinning. So you definitely want to look there too. You don't want this washer spinning. And we're going to look at our sprag here. Our outer race, you want to make sure it's not got any chatter marks on it. Scott's brought it up really good. Throw the sprag away, get you a new one. I've got a new one over there. And then you're going to come in here and you're going to scotch bright this inner race up. Get that off there. But you're going to look on this inner race right here for any type of chatter marks or anything like that. Dents from the sprag locking. Uh, if it looks good, scotch bright it up. And then you're going to look in here. Where your, or your center support rings run. If it looks good, no wear, take some scotch bright, clean it up. So, looking pretty good, really, so far. Of course, we have our engine brake band here. Uh, and then we're going to get down in here and get our intermediate clutches out. Now, if you notice here, there's a big gap from here to here. Do not put the snap ring in like that. Always turn it where the fingers are, the open part of the snap ring is away from this gap right here. Because that's what breaks the this, this snap rings. So you want to keep that away from there. Of course, we have our intermediate clutches. Now you notice we do have a wave in here. We will be leaving that in there. If you leave the wave out, this thing will just pop too hard in second gear. So even though it's a farm truck, we still want it to shift decent, but not feel like a race truck. You notice here too, they got this snap ring right in here in this gap. Always put this in over here. You can still get it out easy, no matter where you put it. It's just that I don't like putting them over there. Now, of course, this is our beveled snap, or not bevel, but it's got a bevel on this side, flat on this side. So you'll want to put it in with a bevel out, like that. Of course, we have a bearing here, looks like that. Kind of a weird one the way it puts together. We have a thrust washer here, four tab. Now we'll go back with a metal tab, I'll show you. This metal tab right here, this four tab, you can put actually in here too. Kind of get this. See how we have a metal four tab washer? You can put this down in here and it'll sit right in the same place this plastic one did and get that plastic out of there. Especially in a drag race application where the training's gonna get really, really hot, uh, you can get that out of there. Uh, we'll do it just because he's a farmer and he's gonna lug around in the fields and get this thing probably blistering hot. So we're gonna definitely get all the plastic out of this thing that we can. So. Now the course on your sun gear right here, if you notice, um, this sun gear has four tabs. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find one real quick. Try to show everybody. Anytime you have a rear lube, the cooler line's in the back of the case back here. This tranny physically lubes uh, through the bearings and stuff like that. It doesn't go through the bushings, uh, or excuse me, it, uh, it goes through the, the bushings here, but it doesn't go through the center of the shafts like your early style does. So if you notice, we have four lugs right here so that's so fluid can physically travel through there see all the way through so just like this here see how this bushing's got grooves going through it that's because oil goes through there and lubricates the tranny forwards and backwards so the early design the bushings were solid 
And if you put a solid bushing in there, you just stop the oil from going forward and lubricating the trannies going forward. So anytime uh, you got a rear lube style cooter line, it lubes through the bushings, through the gears, not through the center of the shafts. Of course, on our sun gear, you want to look at it really close. We replaced 90% of these things too from wear. You want to look on both sides, see what type of wear or pitting you have. Your support, same way here. Uh, you got a washer here that is selective if you need to set your end clearance up from your support to the back of the tranny. And then your, your clearance in the front of the tranny is, is set different. So you got two places you can set your clearances up on here. Always replace your bushing in here. If this bushing's wore out, it's going to let uh, your support rub on this drum right here. Because this piece here is what keeps everything centered and keeps this drum from rubbing on here. So if you get a bushing wear here, you get a bushing wear here, this drum's going to physically rub right there. So always new bushings. This little culprit right here, you always want to check your pins for moving. These pins are really bad about walking this direction towards that plastic washer right here and grinding half the washer off because you notice it only hits half the washer. So we'll come in here and check them for the depth and then we'll come in here and we will TIG weld these pins from ever moving again, the four pins. Put a new bushing in here. 180 grit this up really good for your new band. Of course you have your roller lower sprag assembly here. This out of here real quick. Of course, this is a four-wheel drive. It's got a little short shaft here. You always want to put your, make sure you put your bushings in right on these things. They make three different bushings you can put in here, so you got to be really careful on that. And then doing any type of changing. Uh, bearings or anything like that on this unit you remember see them lube holes right here there's four of them I talked about it, even on this support here or this uh, sun gear right here there's four of them so if you put a ring gear in here that has no holes you just cut the oil going off to this bushing right here to lubricate it and this bearing in the back right here that sets right here so you can see it just barely goes around that snap ring in four holes so that's what lubricates a bushing and this bearing. So if you put the wrong support in here, or if you went and got you a 400 bearing off the, uh, out of your parts bin or something, and you put it in there without these three little lugs, and you put a, a solid round one here and you plug them holes up, it does the same thing. So you gotta be really careful on that type of deal, guys. On your rear planet, just check for any type of gear wobbling, your brass washers missing, anything like that, excessive clearance pin discoloration. Also we want to check it right here and see if they've been ratcheting it in park. Somebody doesn't come to a stop all the time you'll get wear right here uh, from them in the park in the park just constantly doing it so you can see there's a lot of parts in these 480 E's too and it takes a lot to do them uh, especially to do them right so Teresa huh it takes a lot to do them I mean we just do so many units but you know Teresa we want to thank you for videoing we just love you to death. Even our fans love you to death. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. They just like the fluid in the face. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, you know they love Annie. She's trying to escape over there. Because it stinks in here. Yeah, it's probably pretty bad. <laughs> well, guys, don't forget to go subscribe. Push that notification bell like Trent always says. And stay tuned. We have much, much more to come. You have a great day.